putting on the wrong levers here. Good morning, good morning. Uh, hope that you are all doing brilliantly this morning. Amazing to see you again. It's been a while. It feels like forever. I just said to uh, Nikki and Norma here in the green room at the back that she's, it feels like this has been ages. And uh, simply because we didn't have an episode last week, uh, we needed a bit of a break for several reasons. And uh, the biggest of which was the amazing conference that we had that uh, I think went down without a hitch. And uh, if I look at the feedback, it's been, been mind blowing. And uh, it's not your standard type of conference that we had. Uh, you know, it was something completely unique with a different value proposition. And people have really just been like open to this. And, and if you were there, just, Sure. A massive thank you from us. Uh, it's amazing to have seen all the support. Uh, I think we had 130 people watching live throughout the day. Um, you know, we never had less than that almost uh, that was watching live. If I look at all the different regions, because we went from there to the United States, to Australia, to the UK. And, uh, you know, we definitely had the most people watching throughout the day, as far as I know. Uh, so really, really big, big thank you for, for, for everybody or everyone that has uh, supported us. We really appreciate it. And uh, there's more to come in this line. So uh, I'll tell you a little bit more a little bit later. But uh, yeah, what are we talking about today? Well, today I'm going to talk about five effective strategies to grow your business in 2021. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. These are things that work. They can be adapted for in-person and online. And I'm really excited to share this with you today. But before I do, I am very happy that we have uh, Nikki McDonald back today. I think David also <laughs> needed a break. Um, last week he said to me, oh, he's so glad that we didn't have an episode uh, because I mean, he also spoke at the conference and it was just yeah, amazing. and. Uh, but without any further ado, let me go over to Nikki for the news. Thank you, Francois. Um, today's the Friday, the 2nd of July, and the FBI is happy to bring you the following news. So let's look at crypto. While the regulators grapple with how to regulate crypto assets, it seems that another crypto scam, this time three times the size of MTI, has been uncovered. AfriCrypt is a private company that was established in 2019, was hacked in April 2021 with crypto assets allegedly, allegedly approximating 54 billion being stolen. The AfriCrypt model required invested, investors to make deposits, which was then used to purchase crypto assets, and they promised returns of up to 10% per day. The two brothers in charge of this has um, disappeared, and the Hawks are looking for them at this stage. Now, we can only repeat the warning published by the FSCA and National Treasury and that everyone considering crypto assets must, must do their due diligence as there are currently no, no regulatory protections. And I'm going to quote the FSA. They said our preliminary, preliminary observations concerning AfriCrypt led us to believe that regardless of what mechanisms are put, are put in place, this entity was offering exceptionally high and unrealistic returns, akin to those offered by unlawful investment schemes commonly known as Ponzi's. The public is urged to understand that unrealistically high returns suggests that the investment scheme is likely to be fraudulent. Moreover, no investment should be made without seeking the assistance and advice of properly licensed financial service providers. We should only offer products from legitimately licensed financial institutions. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is. Then on the credit side, TransUnion has launched the quarterly insights report. This is very interesting. And this report shows how the ongoing uncertainty and financial hardship that was caused by COVID-19 have impacted the consumer credit market. Consumer and lender appetite for new credit remained subdued in the latest quarter with originations, that is a measure of new accounts opened that is a function of both supply and demand, continuing to fall across all major consumer credit categories. Overall, the number of consumers participating in the credit market has reduced by 3% over the last year. And in contrast to that, outstanding balances have increased across all consumer credit categories. 
This indicates that lenders are focused on extending credit to existing customers rather than onboarding new borrowers. However, when looking at the drivers of change in balance growth, there was a continued divergence between consumers who had been financially impacted by the pandemic and those who hadn't. There were also a number of emerging trends between generations and lender types when viewing the performance of unsecured lending products. Now that is credit cards and unsecured personal loans. Delinquencies also continue to climb for most of the major consumer credit categories, with the exception of vehicle finance loans, which showed a small improvement. As in previous quarters, the increase in missed payments has also contributed to growth in outstanding balances across most products. And then my last bit of news is once again a piece of useless information. The 2nd of July is officially listed as World UFO Day. And this is more serious than you would think. UFOs aren't just the playpen of conspiracy theorists and sci-fi fans. NASA actually awards grants to reputable scientists seeking real-life ETs. And astro astronomers have been scanning the heavens for signs of artificial signals of life for decades. However, a recent report by the U.S. government on unidentified aerial phenomena concluded that these recent sightings and videos were not of extraterrestrial visitors, but could be a foreign power's technology. So I will conclude the news with, the truth is out there. Thank you, Francois. Yes, it absolutely is. Nikki, thank you so much. I wish you a fantastic weekend and uh, may the power come back. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, stay safe. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cool stuff. All right. So with that, let's get into, you know it by now, uh, personal development with Norma. And Norma this morning is talking about constraints. And I'm also going to talk about constraints, but I'm not going to let the cat out of the bags. Um, I think the constraints we're talking about, not 100% the same thing, but really excited for this. So Norma, uh, over to you. Good morning, everyone. So I want to talk to you about constraints today and the effect that it has on our lives. So constraints is really those intentional restrictions or limitations that we set on ourselves. So we create rules in a certain area. And the reason we do that is to really simplify things and to get to, to where we want to be, to get to our results. So there's just two uh, very fascinating um, examples that I can give you of people that had constraints and had huge, huge success because of that. Um, you, I don't know if you know the movie The Blair Witch Project. They only had a budget of about $60,000 and they made over $250 million at the box office. So this seemingly shaky home video footage just added to the authenticity of this movie and it also um, contributed to the movie being more terrifying. The second example is the book uh, Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Seuss. So Dr. Seuss had a bet with his publisher and the publisher asked him to write a book with only 50 predetermined words. And this book became a bestseller and also sold about 8 million copies. 8, 8, um, 8 million copies, yes. So what I've, I've learned from these constraints is that artists love these constraints because they describe it as creating sort of this box where they can think into. And I know as well that architects love constraints because that sort of gives them a framework and it gives them sort of a base where they can start their projects from. So maybe we can learn from these people. So I think we think that the more options we have, that the more freedom we have, but really the opposite is true. So let's look on the one side where we have fewer options that would give us more simplicity. It would give us even more freedom and leads to success. So just think maybe in your own life where you actually see results and that you might intentionally or unintentionally have set constraints in those areas. So a couple of examples that I can mention is maybe in your health that you've decided I am only going to be eating fish or I'm not going to be eating uh, flour and sugar, for instance. I might decide that I only wear neutral colors. Um, I might decide that I only 
uh, do, for instance, one program a year for skills development um, that I focus and, and, and give them all my energy in only that, that one program. On the other side, we have lots of options. So we have lots of decisions that we need to make, and that can lead to overwhelm and anxiety. And again, just think of your own life. Where do you have a lot of anxiety and, um, and, and overwhelm? And is there any constraints in those areas of your life? A couple of examples I can give you there is, again, let's use health. So you might not have any constraints in health. So it means you eat whatever you whatever is in front of you. When you go grocery shopping, you maybe buy the things that is not healthy or maybe is just convenient or easy to make. You maybe have too many goals that you don't actually sit down and prioritize any goals so nothing gets done. So instead of seeing constraints as something that really limits us, I think we can use it um, to increase our productivity and maybe also increase um, uh, our, our creativity. So in areas of time, for instance, we can maybe set deadlines or we can maybe set limits on certain projects. Because we're setting that constraint, it actually gives us back some of our time. So the big reason we have constraints is really to increase our focus, our commitment, our discipline, and really productivity. So it, it eliminates really that decision fatigue that we get, um, that mental chatter that we have, the overwhelm and the anxiety. So yes, when we introduce this concept to our brain, it surely will um, think something has gone wrong. It might think we're missing out because we are um, sort of closing in on our options. It might think that uh, we uh, are letting go of some opportunities, but I think in the long run, it gives us back more of our energy. Uh, it gives us back our mental space. So whatever we're busy with, we can really dive into that project or that goal to get our res to the results that we uh, that we need and the results we want. Thank you, Francois. Awesome stuff. Now I'm looking for buttons this morning. I am already out of practice, it seems like. Like, I don't know which button to press first. Norma, thank you so much. Uh, right. Again, some lovely food for thought. Really enjoyed it. Uh, you must have a lovely weekend and uh, we'll see you next week. Great. Thank you. And thanks. Have a good weekend, everyone. Yeah, stay safe. Bye bye. All right. So, yeah, now on to the uh, feature topic for today. Uh, but before I do, I just quickly want to give a shout out to all the Propulsion Pro members that have completed the first LinkedIn challenge over on Propulsion Pro. And uh, it's been an amazing experience, a 10 day challenge, uh, getting those profiles uh, jacked up and really focused on what it is that you want to do. Uh, and uh, the feedback there has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, and the engagement and all of it that happened around the challenge has also been like mind blowing for me. And I really want to thank everybody that participated in that. The second part of this, uh, where we're going to be looking at engagement and growing your network and, and some other strategies, uh, you know, getting getting your, your branding and things out there will be happening in July. So look out for that. Uh, you will have uh, access to that as well. Then uh, also the speaker and influencer program, uh, everybody that participated in that from South Africa, just a huge congratulations uh, from us again. Uh, I think you did a phenomenal job. Uh, we've, we've been talking about this and, and obviously we're a little bit biased, I would say, but uh, we really do think that the South Africans can, they brought it on the day to the conference. And uh, because of that, we do want to uh, celebrate that. So there, are going, there is going to be an awards function on Tuesday, the 13th of uh, July. So uh, we will be sending out some more information uh, to you via WhatsApp. So if you do want to want uh, to be notified when this event is taking place, uh, because we want everybody to come and, and support uh, as an audience and uh, see the events uh, that or, or the awards that we'll be giving out and also a couple of other things that we want to talk about and share on the evening and have some fun. So if, you, if you're not uh, getting our WhatsApp and you do want to be notified when this takes place, so you can just go to propulsion.co.za forward slash WhatsApp and uh, you will join the group. You can always leave the group whenever you want. You have full control over that. So, uh, yeah, so, so that's uh, to, to get some notifications from us. But, uh, yeah, so, so please go and do that. Uh, we really appreciate it if you're not on there already. All right, so, um, so that's the speaker and influencer program and, and, the, and the conference and all of that. And then I just want to ask you a question. And I do want you to, you know, whether you're over on LinkedIn, hello LinkedIn, or whether you're on YouTube, hello YouTube, uh, you can in the chat or if you're watching the recording in the comments below the video, uh, please give me a shout out. Do you prefer, if you want to attend 
these episodes live that we do on a Friday. What do you prefer, 7 a.m. or 8 a.m.? Uh, which one would work better for you? Um, it will be great if you can just please leave me a little comment below so I know uh, we are considering whether we should move this uh, back to 8 a.m. But uh, I want your input, what you prefer, and uh, to, to help me make that decision. So, so please do that. All right, so with that, you guessed it, here we go. Feature topic of the day. Yeah, what do you think of my new mug? I didn't, haven't even shown you. Yes, I think it's so amazing. But anyway, cheers. Got to have some coffee, right? I was thinking this morning when I was walking out the house that, can you believe it, that last year, this time, I don't know which episode, I must actually go check which episode we were on, but it was in this time that we were going live every single day for 75 days. And, and I reminisced a little bit <laughs> on my way from the house to the studio here. Yeah? And uh, really, uh, yeah, just, just amazing. So um, thank you for being on this journey with me. I really appreciate it. We've come a long way uh, already looking again at the format of the show and how we can make it better. So if you have any suggestions, please, please give us a, a shot so that uh, we know what you would what you would like to see. Um, so yeah, so let's get into this. And and I want to talk about the five or five most effective strategies in, in France's opinion that uh, would really help you grow your business in a sustainable way in 2021, but in any other year, I would suppose, and also any circumstances. And there's some reasons why I believe that these are the things that really matter uh, at this point in time. So let's get started with uh, what is the the purpose of any great business, in, in my opinion. Well, the very first thing is obviously that that business must be in the business of serving their client base. And, and whoever those clients may be, if you serve and you put your client's interest first and you're really there to make a difference, then you that's the first and necessary step to move towards a sustainable business. And then if you do that, what do you want to do? You want to make a profit and you also want to grow continuously. So that's the purpose of any great business. I don't think if you're in business that you're just there to maintain what it is. And I guess for some people, if you want to call it a lifestyle business, absolutely, that is your personal preference and what you're after. But most other business owners would want to grow their businesses. Why? Because they want to have a bigger impact. That's the simple reason. And it's not about making more money. It's not about making more profit. It is about serving more and it's about impacting more. That's what it's about. That's what we're really after if you want to grow your business sustainably. But in doing that, so it doesn't matter whether we are in financial advice or you are a professional working in some, some, some other profession or you're a business owner of whatever sorts, this holds true. And whether you're a one man business, one woman business, or you are a big business with multiple partners or shareholders and, and so forth, this all rings true at the end of the day. So that's the purpose of any great business. But to do that specifically today, and I mean, there are many things, and this is where the constraints come in, <laughs> which is a little bit different from the things that Norma just spoke about. But from my, from my perspective, if I look at it where we are right now in 2021, so what, where are we just uh, the 2nd of July in 2021? You know, what are the constraints right now? How are things changing? How have things evolved uh, in the last 12 months? Not only because of what, what we're going through, but there's a lot of legislation and things that have been implemented. The most notable of all is the thing that nobody knows how to pronounce, uh, which now have become Popeye, Popeye. Popeye, I don't know, uh, but hopefully you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so the old Poppy Act, uh, or, or well, the new Poppy Act, uh, which everybody refers to now as Papaya. And this is a big thing that has now come out where you need to look at like, you know, how much information are you gathering? Why are you gathering this, in, this information? What are you using it for? Is it necessary to have this? How are you protecting this information? And do you have consent to do things? And I mean, there's all these regulations. You need an, an, an information officer. You Oh, man, it is just getting harder and harder and harder to grow your business. Because if you've got a new business, like how do you get clients? If I'm not allowed to pick up the phone and, and look you up on the web or in a telephone book or somewhere, you know, like I'm not allowed to contact you to sell you anything, basically. So how do I grow my business? So this is a huge constraint for, for many businesses right now. 
Then the other thing is obviously all the noise because now suddenly everybody's like can be seen everywhere and there's a lot of noise in the system. There's a lot of people that have started podcasts and there's a lot of people that have started, um, you know, like being very active on social media that are all over the place. And a lot of these things are just noise because they're not doing it properly. But like we need to deal with that noise. If we want to do things properly and stand out and be unique and focus on our value proposition and not on what the competition is doing, there's a lot of noise that we need to contend with. And then thirdly is obviously lockdown because then we're in lockdown, then we're out of lockdown, then we're in lockdown, then we're out. And this is not going to go away in the short term. I promise you this because like, like I mean, we're not even close to getting to, to, to hurt immunity in South Africa specifically. And uh, until we do, um, I must say, Quibus, I agree with your post on, on LinkedIn uh, that you did, I think, yesterday, that, you know, it's, it, it's definitely that until we get there, this is not going away and we don't have much time. We better do this because otherwise we're going to find ourselves in a very tough situation as far as the economy is concerned, as far as relationships and, and, and you know, South Africans passing away because of this. So we really need to look at that. So these are just three of the constraints that we're dealing with right now and some changes that have come along in the recent past that have changed the landscape in which we in which we operate the other question i just want to ask is like you know like catch or attract catch or attract which one is better i don't know in your opinion what do you think should we be going out hunting for clients and just getting and and, and if i think about catching what what, I, what comes to mind is sort of when you go fishing you know deep sea fishing and you cast the net and you catch a lot of fish there's a lot of that fish that maybe needs to be thrown back because they are undersized. But so it's 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 easy to cast the net and it's easy to rope all those clients or all those fish in. But when you have that fish on the boat, now the work starts and you've got to go through everything. And there's some that would have died in the process and there's some that you'll throw back. And But you've got to sort through all of them to get there. And you are the one that needs to put that effort in. And it's your time. Um, it's your money. It's, it's all of that that's going into sorting the fish, basically. So from my perspective, you know, maybe it's better to have some form of a filter where it's better to attract clients and you have something that, that, that I refer to as a, as a red row policy. You know, you think about, and this isn't my concept, this was a concept uh, in a book that I, that I read, uh, Booking Yourself Solid. I can't remember the guy's name now. But he spoke about the red velvet rope policy. And what he was talking about is basically that, you know, you, like we always see it in the movies. I, I watched a, a series the other day where exactly this people would go to a nightclub and then there's this rope. And unless you're on the list, they don't open for you and you can't come in. So it's, it's basically based on that. But you've got to have a policy of who is it that you work with, like the kind of people that you want to work with. And not, I'm not only talking about the demographics, but also more who they are as people. So it's not just the what they do. Uh, it's also the who they are. So those two things together really brings like sort of that, uh, all of that together. So attracting the right people through doing certain things, I think is a much more powerful, much more effective and much more efficient way of growing your business. Uh, so yes, there is a lot of uh, effort and time and, and investment that needs to go into this. But uh, on that, let's get into what the, uh, let me quickly jump to the comments. Um, so let me just quickly see what there is. Um, I think there's a lot of comments that I missed. So let me just see quickly. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. Let me, no. Cool. It's all the other stuff. All right. Uh, yeah. So Koba says uh, push or pull client attrition, become the magnet. So you, uh, so you pull clients with power of personal branding and social media branding. Yes, Koba, you are. Uh, you and I are singing from the same songbook. Right, so number one, what is number one? And, and this is something that even before lockdown, and even though this is something that I've been professing to people for a long time, very few are doing this. And I want to encourage you to dabble in this, put your toe in the water, get your feet wet, uh, you know, try this. This is really some amazing, amazing ways that you can do this. And I had the privilege of talking to somebody the other day 
that uh, I'm going to be helping, uh, putting some other stuff in place to help them even further. But the most amazing thing of, of what they've been doing is for years they've been doing some of these that I want to share with you with great success. And what they are basically doing is the number five thing as well that I'm going to share with you. But what is number one? Number one is events. And I have two episodes here on, on Propulsion Live or previously VCF that you can go and watch. It was episode, I think, 24 and 25 or 23 and 24. But it was uh, virtual client events, uh, basically a part one and a part two that I did. So go check those out. But I just want to talk about, this is not about hosting just virtual events. So the events that I want to share with you, the ideas here of how to cultivate and attract the right clients and filter out the clients that you don't want will be based on whether you can do this in person or you can do this uh, online, you can do it live, you can do it pre-recorded. So there's a whole host of things here that I want to share with you. So I hope that you can make notes. So if you don't have a notebook or something with you, please use your phone um, and, and make some notes. But the first one is that you could have a social event. Just get a group of clients together and have a virtual beer or have a virtual wine or cheese and wine even. Let everybody bring their own cheese and wine and you just have a discussion over, over on a, a Zoom or a Teams or something. Or what you could do is as well, obviously, if it's in person, just have a social event. In other words, if it's a social event, it's about letting them connect to one another, getting to know one another. There is absolutely no agenda. It is purely social connecting, getting to know each other better. So there's that. The other one is an appreciation event where in this, this event is almost the same as a social, but it is more about, about saying thank you. Again, no other agenda. We are always so... Um, tempted to use every opportunity where we have a group of clients together to market something, to tell them about something, to, 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 to try and get business out of it. But when we do these events where there's absolutely no agenda, it is absolutely just a thank you and, uh, and, and connect, letting them connect. That's the value. It's about them. It's not about your business or yourself. It's about them and saying thank you. So these, these two types of events are extremely extremely powerful then have you thought about doing client awards like you know just having some form of an award i don't know I'd like i need to think about some ideas there but like just maybe there's something to recognize clients you know and it's not about being my biggest client or my most important client or it's got nothing to do with that but people that have walked a journey you know like it could be something with like client with the most tenacity or client with the most resilience clients uh, with the most commitment or clients, I don't, I don't know, there, there's all these other things that we can reward apart from like how important these clients are to you. But to rather focus with these awards on things that they have achieved and that make them stand out. Because that is also then if you share that with the rest of your client base, it's also motivational and inspirational to them as well. The other thing then that, again, I don't see enough people using is webinars. And I know like you're going to go front, so like we are webinar out. Don't talk to me about webinars. But I do believe that if you do it in the right way and there's value that you're adding with those webinars. And remember, what is a webinar about? For most people, it's about selling. It's not about selling. It is about educating. It is about helping people to understand and helping them to engage with you better, to highlight certain things for them, to, to, to start them on a journey that they need to go on. And again, with a webinar like that, you may have lots of people joining and remember you could always invite your existing clients and let them invite their friends and their family etc and in that way you get exposure to more people and then from there you can you can let them uh, you know sort of filter out now we're not interested we don't like this i'm not ready for this whatever that that may be then the other thing that goes with webinars is some educational content. So have you ever thought, and there are some, I mean, Lisa Linfield that has been on here, she's got some, some courses. Kim Potgieter has got some courses for clients. Uh, whether it's on starting a business, whether it is, you know, planning for your retirement, like whatever it may be, but a little short course that you can offer to a client and you can offer these live, you can offer them as a pre-recorded. Uh, but again, you know, and these things can be made available not just to your existing clients, but to everybody. And they can go through that process. And usually it would go from the webinar, maybe to the short course or something like that. But obviously there needs to be plans around how you market this. Um, so you can do that both uh, recorded. In other words, you are becoming, you are scaling yourself because you don't have to be there. You don't have to show up every Wednesday evening, for example. It is just that they can do these things at their own pace. 
uh, somebody else that has done this extremely, extremely successful, if you think about what he's done, is Dave Ramsey. Um, you can go check Dave Ramsey out as well. It's what he's done with that, with their money university, I think it's called, or something in, 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 that, in that line. They, uh, they need to help a lot of people just get the basics right. Budgeting, paying off debt. So they've got these six steps uh, that, that, that take people through. But they put that into a pre-recorded online course. And it costs, people need to pay to attend this. So you can either offer it for free or you can sell it, whatever you, you feel you want to do. But it takes that, it gets them ready for the next step where you really then step in. But you don't have to be the one to be involved in that first process. But in that first process, they also get to know you. Because the more you watch somebody on video, the more you, you see what they're about, how they express themselves, how they explain things, get like, I like this person. Like, and you, you, you feel like you get to know them. And that's the important part uh, about this. Two other types of events. The one is a entertainment slash motivational slash inspirational type of event. Uh, again, no, no other agenda, uh, but that's that. And then the other thing where I, I just, if I look back at, the, at the, the global financial planning conference of which we were part of uh, last week, I mean, how did we bring all the financial planners together from South Africa? How did we get 21 speakers from South Africa to speak on this global stage and the value that it brought, the difference that it made and, and all of that. Why are like we're not thinking about that on a practice level? So why don't you put together a conference for your clients? Don't put that conference together for other financial planners. That would make absolutely no sense. You need to put something together for your clients and then present this and, and invite your clients to this conference. And again, you can decide to make it free, to make it paid, to make it complimentary, sponsored, whatever. You can even go out and get clients to sponsor this event. If you are after a specific type of client and you want to get into, let's say it's doctors. I don't know why we always use doctors. We want to get into doctors. You've got a couple of doctor clients. You know, let them connect you with the right people and then put something together that will be extremely valuable for them and have a diverse conference that not only talks about money and financial planning for doctors, but that talks about other things that may apply to doctors. Get in people to come and talk at this conference. Um, and this isn't, doesn't have to be a three-day thing. It doesn't have to be a full-day thing. It can be a three-hour morning thing or a two-hour morning thing or a half a morning. There's so many things that you can do with this and it's so easy to, to actually run this today, specifically if you're going to do it virtual. Uh, yes, there's some things to overcome in terms of the technology and be getting com comfortable with how you do it. But I think there's a huge opportunity in that where, we, where we're sitting uh, today. And, and you don't have to go like get the most expensive software to do this, etc. I mean, we ran the entire conference using exactly the same software that I'm using for my live show every single day. So really not, not that hard. All right. Then number two, speaking, speaking. Um, this is about putting yourself out there and getting people to, to experience you and getting to know you and getting comfortable in delivering your message to people on that way. It's also a way of scaling yourself, you know, and uh, the idea here again is like, it doesn't help you talking to your peers or, your, or, or the profession. It does not help right? It's not if, you're, if your intention is to grow your business. That is great if you want to build trust and credibility. That's personal branding. Then you talk to, you, to the profession and your peers because you can show clients that you are involved in the profession, you have opportunities to speak and all that good stuff. There's a different motivation for that. But when you talk about speaking for growing your business, also part of personal branding, then you need to be speaking to your ideal client base. Um, you know, or, your, or, or the type of clients that you want to attract, or at least go to where those people hang out. And again, the talk is, is, is done in order to filter out those who are not interested. I got to speak at, um, at, at, at one of the huge construction companies. Yeah, um, and when was it? In 2015, I had an opportunity there. And, and this the whole thing was just about talking about their, their current pension fund, uh, what it is, where it is. And at that point, we had all these changes coming in in terms of uh, the compulsory annuitization, it was at that point where it was going to happen in March 2016 and all of that. So we needed to inform people. But also that opportunity was used to, to tell them about, you know, if you are close to retirement, what are your options? Like, what are the things you need to consider? What are the things you need to look out for? Now, I went there as an independent person and uh, I just delivered the, the talk. 
There were another financial advisor that was present there from, from the company that provides the pension fund benefits. And do you know how many of those people came to me directly? I couldn't help them because obviously that was not my role there. I would say, well, you should speak to that person. Then they walk out the door. They go right past me and him and then they walk out the door. But because I was the one standing up speaking and they liked what they heard, they connected, they resonated, they wanted to speak to me further. And that's the first time that I realized like this is a very, very powerful thing. So, so speaking is about, is about getting yourself out there, but speaking to your target audience, that is, or the target client or whatever that, 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 that you're looking for. My suggestion would be to have to come up with sort of three talks, maybe just one in the beginning, but ultimately to have like three short talks, not long things, not an hour keynote or something like that, a 15 minute, 20 minute, 10 minute, like we did with a conference talk that you can offer to your clients to say, listen, I can come and talk at your business on this, uh, specifically if it's larger businesses and there's other executives or, or other people that do what your client does, etc. And you can say, listen, let me come and talk to all the doctors at this hospital where you work because like this is the message and they can arrange this and you can get that exposure um, and you can apply that to any type of business or group of clients that you want to want to talk to so target those existing clients all right number three of course like everybody was waiting for this one and that is uh, yes absolutely social media but there's a specific role that social media play Social media is not, I, I, I can so fondly remember when I just started talking about LinkedIn and social media and that, I think it was back in 2017, um, I had somebody contact me directly via LinkedIn saying that, you know what, I've done this, I've done that, and I haven't gotten one client. And I'm like, but you're there for the wrong reason. Um, social media is not there to, to get clients or to get leads. It's not what it's, it will never work for that because there is no trust. Unfortunately, if you are selling soap, that's one thing. You sell soap, people see it, buy soap, there's very little risk. I like the soap. If it's not nice, mm, didn't waste my life savings. But money is a completely different story. There is trust necessary in order to get people to talk to you. And that is where social media's power sits. And, and you're welcome to sort of share your, your views on this as well. But for me, social media is all about creating awareness, awareness about the fact that you exist, about who you work with, what you do for them, you know, telling stories about things that have happened, you know, maybe showcasing your expertise via social media so that people can see what you're about. This takes that sort of awkwardness away from when somebody doesn't like you or they, or they make this appointment and they come there and they're like, oh, I'm disappointed. This isn't what I, what I expected. And then having to say no, or then they just disappear, you know, like that's what they do. And then you spend all this, oh, I've got this new client following up and just all this effort. And then over time, you are then disappointed because nothing happens. But social media is one of the best filters, I think, that, 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 that we can use. So when you're creating all this awareness and showcasing and building your brand, what you're really doing is building trust. And I think Razan talks about this quite often where it's, it's all about trust. Uh, and, and digital trust is a big thing because that's where it starts. Even if somebody's referring you, when they refer you, you are going to be in a position where like somebody's still going to look for you online. And what does that look like? So even if I can find you online and even if it's easy to find you, what is the first impression when they see your website, when they see your LinkedIn profile, when they see you wherever, what is their first impression? So are those things in place? Because this is all about awareness, branding, and, and trust. And then also what happens with social media, the more you are on social media, is that you are building or you're creating familiarity. It's like people get to think that they know you. They, they get the sense that, you know, there's a connection there. So apart from the trust, I think that familiarity is what makes that initial contact so much easier. So that in the event that they see you here, they see you there, they see you in the next place, and then they, they, they will take action because they feel comfortable to do so. And then also um, the big thing with, with social media, where I think a lot of people are missing out on this opportunity is that too, I see too many, and I understand this, that it's, it's difficult when you start out. But what you do need to consider is that you need to be creating content. You can't just be engaging and commenting and liking and sharing, you have to be creating your own content. You have to. 
And only like one or two percent of people on social media are in fact like actively generating content. So if it wasn't for that one or two percent, you wouldn't even have something to read or to watch. So why are you not creating that? Why are we not taking that step? What is it that makes us uncomfortable? And now in my head, I'm just going back to like we did the 30 day video challenge in Propulsion Pro. And how amazing is that to to get you over that fear in a safe space where nobody can see what you're doing? Only the people who are on exactly the same boat as you that are scared of the same things are going through that. And they and they and they get out the other side saying, whoa, I'm so amazed. You know, like people who are part of the speaker and influencer program uh, over on Propulsion Pro, they like they got on the stage and they spoke. Whereas last in November when we launched this, they were like, yeah, there were one or two or three of them that, that have spoken before, but most others have never, never spoken on a stage or in front of a lot of people, never even like talking about live. So there was a lot to contend with, but they went through that journey and they took that first step and they had that first win. And that's what you need to do. So, so that's social media for you. And, uh, and let me just quickly see. Um, so uh, I see Quiver says, uh, agree 100% with client webinars. I received a wonderful webinar checklist from a fellow MDRT member from Indonesia. She perfected webinars and presented at MDRT in June. I can share it with pleasure. Thanks, Quiver. That'll be amazing. If you could also please share that in Propulsion Pro, that'll be, that'll be really, really awesome. Um, cool stuff. Um, Let's see quickly. Um, to the two, so everybody says, please, please, that would be great. Thank you very much, Kubis, for that offer. That's great. So uh, let's uh, continue. Um, just on address here, Henning, I don't know if you're still watching, um, but you need to disconnect from me on, on LinkedIn if you're not interested to see the notifications because we can't, we, we can't control that. Uh, I think you connected with me back when, uh, when, when uh, what was the name? Oh, when somebody was on the show last year, I um, can't get to a name now, but um, and, and yeah, it's just because you connected with me. So you can just say, say to unfollow me so that you don't get notifications or you could really just go disconnect because I can't control whether you see this or not. And also you don't need to click on it if you, if you don't want to. All right. So, uh, so with that, let's uh, move on. Then uh, number four is advocacy. So advocacy is a lot better than referrals. Um, and, and this is sort of, I need to, to, to remind you that we did this on episode 29 last year. Uh, this was Kubis' uh, episode. It is the most popular episode of all the episodes that had the, by far the most views. And, uh, you know, it's just packed with value. So you need to go check that out. Episode 29, where Kubis talks about how he did this in his practice. But advocacy is absolutely an amazing, amazing thing. It's, 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 it's putting referrals on the next level. Um, it is, it's really doing that. So um, what advocacy is, is this is where clients start referring you automatically, um, but not only just going out and being an advocate for you and professing and marketing your services on your behalf without you asking. What is very important is that you've got to educate them around how they should be doing that. They can't just go out willy-nilly and just hand out things and just say, oh, just phone Francois or just phone Pity or Quissy or Sunny. Uh, that's not what they should be doing. So what they need to be doing is to really, or you need to have a strategy in order of how you're going to do this. And part of that strategy, I believe this with all my heart and I see it working. And this is something that I know that Quibus is also talking about a lot. And this is that when, how do you, how do you standardize that experience when somebody refers you? So if there are 50 clients or 10 clients or one client out there that are actively, or that is actively referring you to their friends, colleagues, anybody that basically is looking for financial planning is that how do you make sure that the message comes across in a standard way and that they get the same information and that they, they, they see you, that you show up in a consistent way. Well, that is where Profile Me comes in. So you need to go and look at Profile Me and say, like, how do I use this? But it doesn't help you getting Profile Me and then having this beautiful sort of standard thing that you can share with clients and make it easy for clients to contact you and share up to date information and, and all of that. Like you need a strategy that you need to implement in order to get people to use that. And you are the one that needs to drive that. That's the that's the basis or the or the secret behind really getting uh, as much as you can out of something like 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 profile me so you definitely need to go check that that out 
Then number five, my fifth one, and this is something that you will hear me talk about a lot. I spoke about this at the conference. I'm going to talk, I'm going to focus a lot about on, on this going into the future as well, because I'm seeing this. This is what we've done with Propulsion Pro, and this is create a real community. So what is the community? Well, a community is where people get together. And this is usually like if you think with, with, within your client base, there's a core group of clients there that want to need more. There is a core group of, of, of clients who want to connect, who want to be involved, who want to help you build and drive your business. They are there because they've seen the benefits. They've seen the results. They've experienced all the things that, that you do and what it's meant for them, the, 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 the difference that it's made in their lives. So that's important. So that's what you need to be looking at. Uh, and that's what community is really about. So you need to be looking at how do you build a community within your business, within your practice, within, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're here and you're an engineer or you are a lawyer or a doctor, this can still be done. Although I do believe that doctors <laughs> might be a little bit more, more difficult. But I do believe that if you're on certain lines of, of the medical profession, I think there are lots of things that, that one could do from a community perspective. But the big, big thing about a community is that the members of that community genuinely care for the other members or for the community's well-being. So it's not about yourself. It's about giving back. It's about helping, sharing. So it's about getting help. It's also about giving help in a community. And we've done this now like with Propulsion Pro for financial planners. And that is what, what that is all about. It's about creating that true connection. It's about giving you a place where you can, you can really share and showcase and learn and ask and do all of those things, but also come up together, you know, being a brain trust and come, uh, coming up with ideas and things like, how are we going to raise the bar for the profession, for example? How can I raise the bar for my business? And it's the same that you can do for your business and with your clients. So that is what it is about. And if you really think about what we do in Propulsion Pro, it's a combination of all of these other four things as well. So we have events, we do uh, the social media stuff. I mean, even like, I'm not, I didn't even talk about things like podcasting and live shows and things like that. Because that is where all of this started, is because of this live show. Everybody that is uh, uh, communicating here, chatting, you know, commenting, uh, talking to one another. I mean, just see what happened when Quibber said, I'm going to, I, I have this thing, I can share it with you. How many people, yes, please, yes, please. That's what community is about. So this is where everything started. And then from there, we now moved it into Propulsion Pro and, and to a distraction-free zone where we do more stuff than just on the show. And, um, and that's what it's about. But we are really fostering a close-knit community. And we're not looking to become the biggest community in the world. All we want is people who are committed and people who care and people who want to, to take things forward. That's what it's about. We are always open to learning. That's, that's some of the most important stuff that, that we are looking for. And you can do exactly the same with your client base. And in fact, not everybody in that community, you can decide whether they must be just your existing clients or whether you need to be a client to become part of that community or you can foster a community in another way. And there's many ways to, to do that. And I don't have time to, to go into all of that. So, uh, but those are the five, the five ideas. So, so quite keen to hear your, your uh, feedback and to let me know what do you think? Um, you know, is there something that will be that, that will be valuable for you. And uh, you know, maybe you have some other ideas of how you grow your business, uh, whether it's in the past or right now, that has been working for you. Please reach out to me and uh, let me know. I will be very, very keen to, to sort of see that and uh, to, learn, to learn more about it. Um, so yeah, and if you want to check out more about Propulsion Pro, uh, you're welcome to do that at propulsion.co.za forward slash pro. All the information is there. If you have questions, let me know. And uh, otherwise, you can sign up uh, on the website and join this amazing community as well and become part of something truly significant. All right. So thank you very much. That's that for me this morning. And I really appreciate you all being here. I really, really missed you. Um, I can't believe like when I stood here this morning and I play, started playing the music, I got my goosebumps like I always do. Uh, sort of got that knopani kill. Like, you know, it's always a freaking proud moment for me to come and stand here to... I guess I have the privilege to, to be able to, to share what I think with you and to have somebody to listen to what I have to say. And then also for you to go and implement this in your business is obviously that's the ultimate 
thing that that really gives me uh, a jump in my step but uh, yeah so all the best i really appreciate you thank you so so much and uh, i look forward to seeing you back next week they've got a whole list of guests in the pipeline so really looking forward at the next few weeks i think there's over 20 guests that are coming up so really really excited for that thank you very much keep safe uh, stay safe uh, enjoy your weekend i hope that you get a little bit out and about in the open air not inside but open and uh, i will see you back next week same place same time thank you and remember raise the bar